tube I want to tie together with you today, uh, we start with a copper tube, uh, a flexi copper colored tube. I've just cut 10 millimeters off the back because I want approximately 15 millimeter there. So the 40-25 would be the optimal length of flexi tube to choose. For this, I add 15 millimeter flexi, millimeter flexi weight. And to get this fixed, it's no problem. You just slide it back toward the back edge here and you push it onto the flexi needle. And now it's fixed and ready to tie on. Then I start at the front and go back, just covering the tube with thread. And I stop approximately 12 to 13 millimeters from the back. Just making a few wraps. As you can see here, it goes down a little bit, which is very nice when I come with the, with the small oval gold tinsel. I'm making these three wraps to get the fluorofiber standing a little bit up. As a support and as a lifter. Like this. Just push it forward a little bit. Then I would like to add some red fluorofiber for the tail. Just a little piece. And I tie this at the top. Just a few wraps and then I position it so that it goes precisely on top. then open up the wraps just to fix it and approximately half way down I will cut it off because here my dubbing body will come later on like this then I just use my nail push it a little bit I raise it up spread it out like this and then I cut into a small arrow to give it a nice fine taper like this and just to show to the camera here and just give it a little bit of trimming and you have a very nice tapered tail and then I put, this is medium oval ribbing. Go all the way back to the edge. And then I place it on the vise and just lock it. Then I go to the center. And I will take holographic tinsel, size large, tie it in oh, under, the, under the body and I will go all the way to the back and forth again. This gives a nice uniform body with no holes in it. Pay a little bit of attention when you turn and then just Away. And then we have a small ledge. I will just cover that ledge as well, like this. And then we have a nice ending, taking it, pulling it back, locking, two wraps, cut, and then it's done. So then I go forth. I need to go counterclockwise with the bobbin once in a while because the thread is, is being wrapped the wrong way. So we go here, make a loop, 
go three wraps back, one wrap around to center it, and then go back to the edge. I always use a dubbing loop um, because it gives you a much stronger body than if you just dubbed it. And another thing is that if you use a dubbing twister, always be sure that the, the threads are coming on the inside of the hooks because that means that when you pull, it will become very tight and if you use rabbit hair, etc., it will stay in there. But if you go on the outside, it will, it will open up. So we will use a little bit of dubbing. This is angel hair in the dubbing version. And we call it rainbow, which is very nice. Just put it together to a small ball. Put it in the center of the loop and tighten it a little bit. And then I pull a little bit in both ends. This means that I will have a cigar-like taper when I spin it. Like this. And as you can see, due to the, what can you say, the, the fibers will come out very nicely. And it has a thin taper in the start and a thin taper in the, in the end. And this will give us a very nice cigar-like taper on the body. And then you just roll away. And this is very, very strong. And then And I leave one or two millimeters of the weight, the dubbing body like this, because I need my, my body haggle to go this way down. Now we need to have a body haggle, and for this I use a badger dyed red. Strip it on the bottom. Like this, and then I turn it to go on the downside first. Pull it tight. It's, it's quite a stiff stem this one has, so and then One full wrap to the front end before going back through the body and then not all the way to the back, stop approximately five millimeters before, take a rip, go up through and it will lock everything make the fly very very strong and hopefully catch several salmon before ending its life. So and then we slide down on the thin tube when we finish, give it a few wraps, pull it back with all the fibers like this. And then cut it off. Now before we cut this, we, 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 we hang on to this a little bit more because we need to take the Velcro, in this case it's uh, on the back of a measuring gauge. This will pull the fibers out very nicely and give a, a very nice silhouette to the fly. Now, if there's some fibers of the angel dub that is extra long, you just pull it out and cut it. This will look nice 
and then this haggle feather. Okay, now let's put in the wing. For the wing I use Marble Fox. Marble Fox is a super nice material sitting in between Arctic Fox as being fairly stiff and Temple Dog which is illegal to use, which is very very super soft. Just cut off a small piece. Take the wife's brush. Take the underwool away. Measuring and normally the first wing have the same length as to the tip of the tag. It's a little bit thin, so I can remove a little bit of, of this. There it's fine. Again, when I tie in fox, I just give it three wraps, then it sits, the nail, you can pull it nicely into position, see too that everything is okay, and then you just pull, lock, and two wraps, and it's locked. Mostly when I cut my fox wings, I use a knife instead of a scissor because you can go much closer, and so I clean it up by just pushing very gently. Don't push too hard because then you will go into the tube and it will have a weak spot. And we have done everything we can to remove weak spots. So just pull until you feel resistance and pull forward on the tube. See, now it's clean. So what we do now is we need to add a little bit of angel hair, also in the color rainbow. Just, let's say, 10 strands. You can always pull it off later. Put it up in a V. You use, you use the bobbin as a weight. And then you can just place it. Place it on a little bit of an angle. See too that everything sits right. Pull a little harder, pull it back, and then give it one more, because that means that you can adjust it so that it sits right where it's supposed to be. And then three wraps, it's locked. The scissor sliding up gently through the flash. Like this. I just love this color rainbow. It has a very nice shine to it. Now it's time for the second haggle. And in this case, it's Grizzly Soft Patch color red and I'm looking for a feather that has a little bit of fluff to it. This is. And when I say fluff I mean that has these small fibers down here. These are very very nice and we want these to go on the outside. So we remove the feather part here like this. It, and then we make a triangle like this. This makes it very easy to tie in. So we just grab it, turn it, and I always tie in my feathers at the bottom. Now we just grab the haggle. And I, I like my haggle to be a little bit more compact here at the front. There will be there will come a second wing to kind of end it, so I just lock it, put it back, locking it like this. Now 
Now, before we put the last wing on, we would like to have just a few strands of flesh that goes the entire length and a little bit beyond. So I just take four strands of flesh, pull up like we did before, adjust, pull, back, lock, and that's it. Then these we will leave until we are completely done with the fly and then we can adjust them. But these are, these are very important that they are just a little bit longer than the main wing and then we will knurl them up a little bit so that they will swim freely. So now we want to add the last wing and here we want to have a fairly long piece and it's going to be a very fairly small piece of the fox. Take away some of the underwool. This we want to be reaching just a little bit further than the than the first one so that you will get a quite compact fly that doesn't go into the hooks the three wraps the nail go down nicely on the side so that you will spread the hairs like this pull hard three three wraps and it's set. And now you have a very small, nice head because you do it this way, not too much. Go a little bit further, just cut it. And then gives uh, the flesh abuse. This will make the flesh swim very nicely. And you can just take a comb and just comb it through a little bit. That's a very nice profile. Again, the knife to clean up any small bits and pieces of material, like this. So. As a new thing, I would like to add the new artificial jungle cock that we have been developing for the last few months. And um, the final version will come in a pre-cut version of, of course but I will just take him quickly cut one out the advantage of these jungle cocks is that they are way way more durable than the original one um, so and they cost only a fraction of what an original cost so just show it to you here you tie it in normal you just use it as you would use any jungle cock but there's a there, there's a few tricks that you can that you can use I'll just show you and the other one is tied in like you would do normally oh. You do you adjust it and, and you check it by pulling down the wing to see if they are equal. This needs to go a little This three wraps. And then you just take your needle and to secure it, just take the small edge and go back and lock it so that it's secured. Same on the other side. Three wraps, now that's secured as well. Cut away the surplus, like this. And like this. Okay, now, now the jungle cocks is, uh, or the jungle cock substitutes is there. But I would like it to be a little curvy. Now, if, if we want the, the jungle cock substitute to curve a little bit to match the wing, we can just take a needle in this case and just pull 
attention on this. And then you see that the curve is, is following the wing very nicely. Just turn it, catch the feather, it's not, but catch the German part. And do it like this. And then we have the nice profile that we look into after, in a jungle car. So, okay, now the fly is actually more or less done. I just take a little bit of super glue and I impregnate the tying thread with super glue. Again, a trick from Michael Frodeen. And then you just give it just a few wraps. Like this. And it's done. Now, what I would like to do on this, I would like to, I love the sonic disc, that, that's no secret. So I would like to add the disc here, just slide it back, and the fly is more or less done. All we need now is to cut it, so we just penetrate the plastic, turn it around, take away, pull it off the needle, pull it to the front of the needle, it a little bit like this. Just pull it back and forth. That means that the hole will always stay open. Um, this is a one millimeter needle, so even the thickest leader will now pass without a problem. Check the profile, see if there's anything that's good or wrong or anything. Everything looks fine. There's just one thing that we're missing, and that is my thing of the day. That is to add a little bit of striping. And you just take a marker. Just make sure that it's a good quality marker. Just make nice stripes like this. You can take it from the side as well. And the fly is done. So that was all from me now. I hope you in, uh, enjoy the system and uh, that you can see some of the possibilities in the system that, that I thought you could see. So uh, enjoy.